And joining us to pay tribute to Ray Chikapa Piri is Eugene Mtetwa. He's the president of the South African Music uh, Industry Council. Uh, Eugene, good to have you, and thanks so much for joining us. And our condolences to yourselves, uh, the music fraternity at large, and the South African community. You, I mean, you, you've done a lot of work. You're a crusader and activist when it comes to protecting uh, not only intellectual property, but even the legacy of musicians. We can talk on end about the 30-year the uh, uh, beautiful uh, um, history around Stimel and Ray Piri, but what happens now that uh, he's passed on in terms of what government can do in, in preserving the legacy? Well, thank you for having me, and uh, good evening to, 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 they normally say to the listeners, because we normally go to a radio True. station, <laughs> to the viewers. <laughs> um, I think one thing that I would relate to with uh, Ray Perry is that he was a cultural, uh, cultural activist himself. This is one person who could tell the history of the South African music industry from A to Z. And I'm reeling because I'm saying we are losing these icons who could be telling the story, the history of South African music industry. Currently, um, government has got a program called um, Master Classes, which it would then take legends to go and, and skill, transfer skills to young people, go and you know, uh, mentor young people. But unfortunately, it only takes one when they become 70 which I feel the adaptation from the United States as it is, it is not, it's not conducive for South African uh, industry because of certain things that I would mention, for instance, the mortal rate uh, compared to, South African mortal rate compared to United States would be different. Mm. An artist in the United States at the age of 20 could be a millionaire or billionaire, but in South Africa it takes you for years in fact, your lifetime to become a millionaire. So to say that one would wait until at the age of 70 to start, therefore, transferring skills. We have lost Ray Perry. He, has, he had not started transferring skills to young people. And God, for, God forbid, I'm looking at Dr. Philip Dabane, for instance. Beautiful guitarist. Beautiful guitarist. Yeah, and that's the preservation, I think, that you, of, of exactly. our indigenous knowledge that is, is lost. I mean, it's one thing to be playing the music uh, and getting uh, needle time, but it is about the wealth and wisdom that is lost as well. Yeah, um, we, we normally, in an African way, our history is told from one generation to another generation. So if we're losing this generation, silent as it is, because they are no longer relevant, the radio stations don't play their music anymore, you know, it, it means that we are losing that history. We won't be able to tell our young ones mm -hmm. what really happened in the 50s. Yeah, you know. and, and, and contextualize also the struggle of uh, primarily black uh, performers, artists, and you can take it across the spectrum in the entertainment industry, that what is it that keeps our musician at a, at, at a place where they're not benefiting? They don't really enjoy the, the, the love of their, uh, the, or rather the labor, or the fruit of their labor, so to speak. Uh, intellectual property is the major, the major business in the music industry or in any sector. Now, if that intellectual prote uh, property is not protected, correctly prote protected, you still have a similar situation that existed in 1957, in 1967 when I was born. Uh, that says um, one, one is not an owner of his own intellectual property, but, but there are holders who are owning by virtue of having paid, which means therefore intellectual property is no longer a, 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 a right, but a privilege. Mm. If I can pay for you to do a particular series for a particular season, I own it because I paid for it. So if, it's, if it were commissioned, how, how can that be reversed if we're talking about economic transformation and also restoring that which uh, rightfully belongs to the artist? I like the fact that you are using the correct terms. If you were a politician, I would have much trust in you because now you're talking transformation which means that we are still using the same old models that were there before Freedom Day and still we. Let's look at, for, for instance, look at um, land restitution. Land restitution says people were forced out of their land 
they lost their rights. They gave away their title deeds. You have music, music rights, where people were forced to lose their music rights because they were desperate. Jim come to Joburg, doesn't have a place to stay. Ray Piri told a very beautiful story around that, say, talking about uh, your, your talent scouts, how talent scouts, they became labor brokers, middlemen, and in a way, they would be the ones who communicate with bus, the bus, the gallows, that we never knew we worked for them, but we never saw gallo up till today, I don't know Mr. Gallo. He would then talk to Mr. Gallo to say, uh, my artist needs ABC. And then he comes to me and says, Obasi mm. you know. So you, you lost your rights around so many, so many of, of, of our people are dying poor because they don't have these rights that should be recurring. They are royalties. They should be getting royalties every year, every six months. But we, we, we don't have access to those facilities. Mm. Now, uh, a, a correct measure to do that would be saying, let us, for instance, those that signed contracts before 1994, those should be null and void because they signed them out of ignorance. They did not understand, out of desperation because of the system that was forcing them to be the labor, the labor, the, uh, the labor mass. Mm. Um, let's get back to that and say, therefore, let's redistribute these rights. The restitution of rights of land is a similar process that should be taken to restitute the rights, the intellectual property rights. Let my own his, mm. his rights or family own. But are those debates or discussions uh, currently being ventilated uh, or, you know, making some inroads to try and return a stolen property, as it were? If I had guards, I would go to uh, the tallest building in South Africa and throw myself down because it looks like people will, would only listen when somebody does something drastic. Because we've been talking. I mean, we, we're currently dealing with the white paper review. And some of the things I said, for instance, the issue of 70, as I say that one should one be, be at the age of 70 to be regarded as a legend, to start training. And we, if I was a minister of French culture, the Soweto Theatre will be packed every Thursday with these legends talking to young people, transferring skills. Um, the issue of, of rights, as, as we talk, we have a media that is not receptive to South African content, but foreign content. We have foreign content that is coming through our, our borders, walking this time, not, not in, on radio, walking to come and take jobs for artists. There's a lot that we need to talk about. Unfortunately, nobody has an ear. Yeah, I know 